Hi guys, good morning. It's early in the morning right now. I had this really vivid prophetic dream and this was literally around, right before I woke up actually, because I woke up around like 5.20 around there a.m., right? This was right before I woke up. And as I was transitioning into waking up, I heard the Holy Spirit say broadcast. So this is definitely a prophetic word that he wants me to post, okay? I'm gonna explain there's so much details there's so much signs and wonders like there's so much reasonings and explanations in this prophetic word so please pay very close attention okay so i'm gonna start off with what i remember okay <laughs> and i wrote everything down so i don't forget anything okay so basically when i was i was in my own dream first okay so i was in my own dream first I remember it, I transitioned from being in my own dream and then I ended up in a dream within my dream, okay? For those that don't know, dreams within a dream is extremely prophetic. So I ended up in a dream within a dream. As in, the dream that I ended up in, I was able to observe something prophetically pertaining to someone's life and I was able to see the people surrounding this particular person but it was not my dream but it was a dream that can help me and it's a dream that can help many people so God allowed me to be in this prophetic dream to see the details as to what is important and the revelation so I can broadcast it for whoever this resonates with okay so here's what I noticed right away I did see a female and she was around a group of women. The group of women that she was around, it was about like three or four women. I don't remember exactly if it was three or four, but there were like three or four women, okay? And this female knew these women and she was talking to them and she was catching up with them. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in a long time. You know, where have you been? This indicated to me that these are people that she knew in her past but she has not seen them in a long time, okay? So they were all hanging out and the girls, one of the girls was basically saying how she's having a hard time, her hair is not done, etc., and she's unable to, you know, provide for herself. And the female in this dream who knew these people, she was like, me too, you know, my hair is not done. Da, da, da. And it's so funny because my hair is not done right now. Many of you guys, I remember you guys in the comment section saying that your hair was not done. It's so crazy. That is like magnifying something here. Okay, let's just say that. I'm trying to say the word. I couldn't say the word. Magnifying something significant. There we go. Okay. So um, the lady now that knew these people from her past, she was basically saying like, you know, I know a hairdresser that can help us like let's go book an appointment and one of the girls was like i don't have any money to book the appointment and then the girl who knew these individuals the basically the girl's the main character okay she knew these individuals and she was like well i know someone that can do your hair for you and don't worry i'll pay for it and the girl was like really she's like yeah mind you this girl that's offering to pay she didn't really have much money but she was going out of the kindness, going out of her way in the kindness of her heart to try to help these people from her past. Okay. So basically, they went online and they were looking for someone where they can go and buy bundles for their hair. And she was looking online for her friend, which is this person that sold bundles. And she's like, Oh, I, I know this guy that sells bundles. And she, girls were like, Really? And she's like, Yeah. She went online to, I think it was Facebook. Yeah, it was Facebook. And I remember seeing, I remember, literally remember her showing a Facebook profile of this guy who sold bundles. And then she messaged the guy and she said, hey, I have to get some bundles for my friend. I haven't seen him in a long time. She needs her hair done. I know the hairdresser to take her to, but unfortunately, although I know the hairdresser I need to take her to, we don't have the bundles, etc., etc." So the guy said, okay, come to this address. So the girl that, the main character, the girl, she was basically like, okay, we have to go to this address, but I don't have my car. My car is not with me right now. My car is in the shop. And the other girl's like, okay, well, how are we gonna get there? She's like, let's just take the train. So they ended up taking the train to this guy's shop to pick up the bundles, okay? Which is on the other side of the city. When they got to this guy's shop, right? The guy didn't, the guy saw her but he pretended like he didn't see her. So he saw her, he saw that they were all outside and he decided not to answer the door, okay? So he made it seem like, like he wasn't there, like he's not in the shop, he's not available, even though he can fully see them outside, okay? So 
right away I was wondering to myself while I was observing all this why is he avoiding them like why is he not allowing them to know that he's there this is so strange right and mind you out of the group of the three girls three or four girls well it's a group of four I think it's a group of four but the three girls are the girls that she knew the main character knew okay so out of the group of the three girls that this main character knew one of the girls her hair was just all over the place and then um the main character her hair was all over the place or her hair was messy too so they stood outside the guy's shop he wouldn't answer she she facebooked him and when she facebooked him he blocked her so she was like oh my gosh what's going on here so disappointed she was like okay you know what i'm picking up my car later today anyways let's just go back and then i will take us to the hair salon they may have some really good hair and the girls were like okay so instead of taking a train she's like you know what let's just take a taxi back and the girls were like well i don't have any money for the taxi she's like don't worry about it i'll pay for it i want to remind you that this main character that's doing all this she's doing it from the kindness of her heart she's not even thinking twice about doing it and she's like i just want me and my girls to feel good etc etc mind you i remember it's so weird because as she was saying all this and wasn't thinking too much about it i remember like god was highlighting how there was a bit of worry as to where her next paycheck was coming from but she kept trying to ignore that worry because she was so focused on trying to help them and i noticed for a fact because when i was in the dream holy spirit was whispering certain things to me in the dream as i was in the dream and i don't know if you guys have experienced that like when you're in a dream within a dream god gives you instructions in the dream and tells you like what to pay attention to or tells you what to write down or what to highlight things like that right so <laughs> he highlighted that in that moment like she's struggling she doesn't know where her next paycheck is coming from yet she's still willing to go out of her way to make sure her girls look good and feel confident about himself etc right so they end up taking a taxi back to this other woman's shop, okay, who has bundles, okay? When they got to this other woman's shop, she was like, oh, um, is it okay if you can do our hair? Do you have any bundles, etc., etc." She's like, I don't have any room to do your hair, but I definitely can sell you guys some bundles. And she's like, okay. So this main character ended up buying bundles to do to, for her friend, to do her friend's hair and bundles for herself, okay? and then she ended up um going back to that whole scenery i don't know whose place that was or what environment that was but they all went back to where the dream originally started where they were all in this one place where they met up so they all ended up there i don't know how they, i don't remember how they ended up there i just remember they all ended up there okay so when they got back to square one they had the bundles now right and she's like okay i'm gonna go find um the hairdresser that we can go to i'm going to call her and book an appointment and see if we can go there okay and when she called the hairdresser um to see if there's any appointment she's like hey i have an appointment can, sorry can i book an appointment for me and my friend to get our hair done um you know can we come around 5 30 she's like well i can take one of you guys around 4 30 she's like you know what She's like, why don't you take my friend at 4.30 and I'll just do my hair another time. And the woman on the phone was like, no, I think I should just take you. I don't want to take your friend. I want to take you for your hair appointment. She's like, no, take my friend. Da, 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 da. And the woman declined. She, de she decided like not to take the friend. And then I was wondering why did she offer to take one of them? And then when she said, okay, her friend's going to go, all of a sudden this woman doesn't want to take the friend. The woman just wants to take her. So the woman offered that because it was a test okay it was a test the main character never knew it was a test so god highlighted to me that <clears throat> the friend was a friend from her past but the friend was not a good friend the friend did not like her the friend deceived her plenty of times behind her back but this woman she the main character she was aware of some of the deception but she already forgiven this friend okay but she also had no idea how deep the deception really goes right so because she didn't understand how deep the deception really goes everybody else knew how deep the deception was so for instance the first guy that they went to to get the bundles 
the guy when the guy saw her with this particular friend out the window he pretended like he wasn't he wasn't in the office and he didn't want to sell them anything reason being is because the guy did not agree with her continuing to be friends with this person not only that he did not agree to the fact that she was going out of her way to do things for this friend although this friend has been really bad to her this friend has been really deceptive to her okay so the guy decided he didn't want no part of it um and he did not because he didn't agree with it he just avoided both of them and that's why he blocked her he literally blocked her because she was friends with this person who betrayed her so much so basically um because the girl said no i, I can't do your friend's hair i can do yours but i can't do your friend's hair so this main character basically canceled and said okay you know what? it's okay forget it. we won't do our hair so this main character was literally about to go out of her way not only did she go and get bundles for her and her friend but she went out of her way to avoid getting her own hair done because she really so badly wanted to make sure her friend got her hair done. I want to also remind you that when the lady offered to take one of them, she ended up saying, just take my friend instead. So she put her friend above herself. You see what I'm saying? Not only did she put her friend above herself pertaining to the hair, but she put her friend above herself when it came to... um you know getting the bundles for her them taking a taxi back etc like she was going above and beyond for her friend okay mind you there was two other women with them but this was the woman that needed her hair done right with along with the main character okay so i want to highlight something else to you okay um then i remember at one point the main character was sitting down and giving um these girls that did not like her secretly was literally giving them like tips on how to grow their hair and she was giving them detail for detail like step to step what step by step what to do etc on how to grow their hair etc and rem let me remind you that although she's going out of way her way and doing this these women they had hardened heart towards her okay but she did not she knew about this but she didn't know the extent of it okay so now the dream shifts <laughs> the dream shifts remember they went remember the, how they ended up back in the original place right so now i noticed that she was literally on her way to get her car and she was walking to this this car repair shop to go pick up her car she didn't take a taxi she didn't take a bus because she's like man i'm low on money i can't really take a bus or taxi right now so i had to put on this light because my my ring lights my ring light battery is dying <clears throat> so she basically spent a lot of her money you know on trying to help her friend okay um or past friend or whatever so the dream shifted now she's walking and she's on her way to get the car and she has to walk for like 20 minutes to get to the car dealership and i noticed that as she was walking so i'm literally watching from the outside watching everything play out as she's walking to the car dealership it was almost like watching a movie as i was watching her walk to the car dealership now it started to snow mind you it was hot weather so everybody had t-shirts on everything like that so it, it reminded me of like july august weather so it was like snowing in the middle of july or august okay so <laughs> i don't know what that represented but it was snowing um it was snowing during hot weather or whatever to be honest i feel like that's hot and cold representing like the hearts of people and i'm gonna tell you why it represents the hearts of people so she was walking in the snow and she's like well i'm almost at my car the car repair shop anyway so i'll have my car in a few minutes right and as she was saying this to herself i remember seeing another group of 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 another group and there was like there was like two women one man okay and they were running as they were running they're trying to get out of the snow they're like oh it's cold oh my gosh it was just hot etc etc so this main character woman she was looking at them as she was walking to the deal to the repair shop and she was like are you guys okay do you guys need anything and they're basically like oh you know we're homeless it's cold outside we don't know what we're gonna do so this woman it's like she instantly started to think like how she can help them and she was trying to figure out how much space she had in her car because she was like okay you know what i'm almost at the car repair shop i'm gonna pick up my car and then pick these people up and figure out what we're gonna do so as she's trying to figure out how she's gonna help them and and get in the car to pick them back up she literally said to them oh just hold on here i'm gonna go pick up stay right here i'm gonna go pick up my car and i'm gonna pick you guys up and they're like okay okay she went to get her car she she did a u-turn and she drove back 
And when she drove back, they were not there. So she came out of her car looking for them. And outside is now really, really, really cold. Really cold, okay? <clears throat> and then she looks across the street and she sees them. And she sees them with this woman. This woman was like a really wealthy woman. I don't know who this woman is, but she was wealthy. And she didn't look like she knew this woman either, okay? She just kept looking at this woman. And the woman was like, there was like a big house. And the woman was like, come guys, come. I have room. Come. I know you guys must be cold. So these, these two women and this man, they ran towards this woman. And they were going in this woman's house to stay warm. So she was like, okay, good. You know, like they have a place to stay. Okay, I can leave now. But the woman waved at her and the woman was like, hi, I'm, I'm Claire. And then she turned around and went back in the house. And then she was like, Claire. So the woman's name is Claire and she's a really wealthy woman. I think she's a celebrity. I'm not sure, but she's a really wealthy woman. So this main character ended up going to the back of Claire's house, big house. And I don't know why she went there, but she went there. And I, again, I'm just watching everything play out, okay? This is like a movie now, okay? So I'm I'm in a dream that's within a dream, but I'm like watching it, okay? <laughs> it's, it's really hard to explain. So she walks behind Claire's home to the backyard and she saw this pond. And the pond had, the pond had a bunch of fishes, big golden fishes in it. Okay, they were goldfishes, but they were really big. They were gigantic, okay? And she was looking for a white fish. And I know for a fact, because as she was looking at the pond, she was like, there's no white fishes. So she was looking for a sign from God, and she was looking for a white fish. So she thought that, okay, because there's no white fish, it means that there's no hope for her. There's no abundance. There's nothing. And she kept like, oh, she, it's almost like she was losing hope. She was like losing hope that her abundance was was no longer coming in, etc. Because she couldn't find a white fish, okay? But as she was looking for the white fish, and she realized it wasn't there, she was a little bit disappointed. That's when the Holy Spirit said, and I heard the Holy Spirit say out loud in the dream, he said, abundance, okay? He said, abundance. So she was looking for the wrong thing. The gold fish represented the abundance. The gold fish represented emotional transformation emotional change the goldfish represented like how much her heart changed as in how good of a person she is and how well she maintained her good heart her good heart and because of her good heart the goldfish all all represented abundance and they were big they were like when i mean there are so much fish they were overlapping each other inside that little pond it, it wasn't like a pond though sorry it would look like a pond, but you know those backyards that have like the built-in ponds, like with the with the like cement around it kind of thing. It was like one of those, but the fish were overlapping itself and they were like jumping up and everything. And there was a bunch of them and they were really big. So the 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 fishes represented abundance, emotional change, and healing, and it represented her heart. It represented that the abundance that she's about to receive is coming from her heart it's coming from having a good heart a clean heart okay so as i opened my eyes let me just make sure i remembered everything because i wrote everything down so as i was after god said abundance and i i realized the meaning of everything going on that's when i was transitioning into waking up so as i was transitioning into waking up before my eyes were even open right i did hear the holy spirit say as i was transitioning he said i wrote it down he said People will need you in their life more than you need them. People will need you in their life more than you need them. And then I heard recognize, okay? But I heard recognize maybe about like five minutes after. So I kind of opened my eyes a little bit and I was kind of analyzing the dream. Like, whoa, like, you know, like really just replaying everything that I was seeing and really just taking in the revelations and then I heard recognize. And then I'm like, okay, this, is, this means that this is something that someone needs to understand. This is something that someone needs to admit. This is someone that, something that someone needs to claim. This is something that needs to be broadcasted. I did hear him say broadcast. So I'm like, okay, this is something important. Okay, like this is something like very important. So the whole point of the dream was God was showing how there are some people that you or whoever's watching this that whoever you whoever's watching this there's some people that you have been extremely good to 
right? And even when they did things to you and continue to do things to you, you kept being good to them. There's even people from the sidelines that saw how good you are to these people and they it frustrated them because they know your worth, they know you deserve better. And this may have even caused you to fall out with other people because you you know you stuck up for people who are not good for you or you helped people who are not good for you so this may have even caused falling outs in your life as well but your heart did not change that's what all the fish represented it represented the abundance that god is bringing you because of the heart that you have and your heart has not changed towards people even in the midst of deception even in the midst of people using you and abusing you right your heart stayed warm so that rep that's why it was snowing in the middle of July, middle of August, because summertime is July and August, and summer and, and summertime is hot. Your heart is warm. Your heart is hot. But you had a lot of people around you that had cold hearts. Okay, they were not good towards you. They were cold. They were frozen. Their their hearts were were like ice. But in the midst of all that, you continued to still stay true to yourself. You continue to still have a good heart. You continue to stay humble despite what people did to you. And this is why God is going to bless you. And the Lord said that a, a lot of these very people that did this to you, a lot of them are going to need you more than you need them. Because you don't need these people. You could have, you know, it's like you, you don't need these people. It's like you can move on with your life receive your abundance from God and live a good life. But the kind of person you are, the kind of heart you are, you are extremely forgiving. You are the kind of person that no matter how much people hurt you, if someone says they're hungry, you're going to feed them. Like the Bible says, when your enemy is hungry, feed your enemy. You see what I'm saying? So you're the kind of person that you will feed someone. You're the kind of person you will give someone a place to stay. You're the kind of person you give someone the last shirt on, shirt on your back or you give someone the last bit of money that you have in your account. And that's what this woman was doing. She, she was sacrificing what she wanted to do to make sure that these people who deceived her and deceived her way more than she even knew, she wanted to make sure that they were happy, they were comfortable, they were confident. And it got to the point where people declined helping them because of how they did her. You see what I'm saying? They declined helping them because of how they did her. And that was also God blocking their blessings, not allowing her to do as much for them because of what they were doing to her and because of how they continued to feel about her despite her heart being so warm and loving, okay? So now, I don't know who Claire is. <laughs> I don't know who this, this wealthy woman or celebrity is, but, you know, the fish at the back represented the abundance and it also represented the emotional transformation of this main person's heart, how their heart continued to stay and continues to transform even better, continues to become bigger and bigger and bigger. So as days go on, your heart is becoming more golden. Your heart is becoming more like Christ. As days go on, your heart is becoming more golden. Your heart is becoming more, oh my gosh, the goldfish, golden. <laughs> your heart is becoming more golden, right? Your heart is becoming more like Christ. It's becoming more big, okay? And this is where the abundance is actually going to come from. This is where the wealth is going to come from. And this is why God was showing all those goldfish because you have a golden heart. The whole dream was a test. The whole dream was a test. God was testing your mind, your your ways and your motives and the kind of person you are. And again, you, you went out of your way to... Um, sacrifice things that you needed for yourself to make sure others were happy and this is something that you've been doing all your life and this is something that you've been doing and your heart continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger through Christ okay now God also mentioned the word gospel and, you know when Jesus was healing people okay so when Jesus was healing people you have to remember something there were so many people that knew about him even before he went to certain places to heal them his name had already gotten out there could you imagine the amount of people that showed up that needed his help that needed him to heal them you have to understand that maybe out of like a thousand people there was at least one person or a few people that doubted him that maybe did not even like him that did not appreciate him until it was time for him to heal them or until it was time for him to until time for him to heal others it's almost like their hearts changed towards him right again 
you can't say we're not we can't say that every single person that watched Jesus heal people, we can't say everyone in that crowd was happy for Jesus. There was probably a few haters in there. We already know the Pharisees were haters. You see what I'm saying? But could you imagine well, when Jesus is healed in the crowd, could you imagine the people, some of the people that did not have good hearts towards him or some of the people that were jealous or some of the people that did not like him, but he was still there to heal them? Remember when he went to his own home, own hometown and he went to heal people and his family and other people that he grew up with, they had hardened hearts towards him? That's exactly what is happening in your case. But here's the thing. Jesus' heart didn't change. He didn't say to himself, oh, because, you know, these people don't like me and they they doubt me and they call me demonically possessed and you know i'm not gonna ever heal anyone ever again no what he did was he dusted his feet off he left he went to a new location and he continued to do his father's will do you see what i'm saying he did not give up that means that despite everything he went through, his heart stayed golden. The Bible says we are to have a heart like Christ. The Bible says we are to be like Christ, right? And that is who you are. I'm not saying you're Jesus, but what I'm saying is he is within you. What I'm saying is the heart that you have is a heart like Christ. What I'm saying is because of the heart that you have, God is going to pour abundance on you, okay? And that's what the dream represented. And that's why the Lord said broadcast, because you have a heart like Christ. You have passed the stage of resentment. You have passed the stage of grudges. You have passed the stage of unforgiveness. You have passed all these stages. Your heart is pure. Your heart is continuing to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as the days go on and you are tested and no matter how much you were tested no matter how much you knew about some of these people you still always thought about them before you thought about yourself you still always thought about ways on how to make others happy before yourself you did not hold on to what someone did to you in the past and say you're not going to bless them because of this you went out of your way to try to bless this person and god is the one that had to stop these blessings in that prophetic dream because they didn't deserve it their heart their heart was still hardened towards you right this same thing happened to Jesus. He continued to keep his heart big. He continued to bless people. He continued to heal people. And you know what ended up happening? A lot of people need Jesus more than Jesus needs them. And I'm not saying you're Jesus, but God said there are people that will need you more than you will need them. And when God said, he didn't say there are people that need you. He said there are people that will, which means upcoming which means the abundance that he is bringing to you it is going to be jaw-dropping and there's going to be people that are going to need you because of the abundance that he is bringing you because of who you are because of the heart that you have there's people that did not appreciate you they did not appreciate you when you were in their presence and they're going to take a l in this season i'm sorry but they're gonna have to take an l in this season but that does not mean that your heart changed towards them even though they may take an L that does not mean your heart changed towards them even when they take the L you are still a good person to them you still love them if they don't receive anything it's because God is preventing them from receiving it but there are those who you're still gonna love and who you're still gonna help in this season despite what they did to you okay so I want to share this prophetic word with you I love you guys I'll talk to you soon bye